test work products. In this tutorial, we will learn what all test work products are required to be produced in the testing life cycle or the testing cycle that you are performing. So to get started, we'll see the first categories of the test work products, usually uh, very common when you are working in the testing uh, project. Um, so the categories are, uh, you can map them easily with the testing life cycle. So you in if you see the life cycle, you have planning, you have monitoring and control, you have analysis, design, implementation, execution, and then completion. So these are some of the common uh, phases in the testing life cycle. And each of these phases, you need to generate the test work product. So once you enter a particular phase, there is some sort of documentation or the work products that need to be produced as part of that particular phase. Uh, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, like it's not just necessarily that in testing you need to do in any development life cycle, uh, in any of the phases when you enter, you need to produce some work items or work products in each of the phase. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be completely discussing about the testing related work products uh, uh, that are produced in the test life cycle. So, the test work products can be broadly categorized into seven categories. So, the test planning work products, monitoring and control work products, uh, analysis work products, design work products, implementation work products, uh, and then test execution work product and test completion work products. Let's see one by one what all important work products are produced as part of all of these phases. So the first uh, category is test planning work product. So as the name suggests, um, test planning work product is mostly what you plan to test. So test plan is one of that work product and it could be one test plan uh, and might be multiple more than one test plan. So usually in a testing product, uh, testing project, if you see there are multiple phases or multiple uh, test planning sessions that happen. Um, depending on how big the release is, say for example, you are doing a couple of releases in six months, for each release you will produce a test plan. And now coming back to the agile development methodology uh, nowadays, uh, because the releases are pretty frequent, uh, which might be you know, like a month or um, every um, two months or three months, there will be a release. So there is definitely a possibility that you produce a test plan for each of that release. So in a particular project, uh, the there could be one just one master test plan and then there will be multiple um, phase or release related test plan. What all goes into the test plan? So test plan is test planning is basically when you talk about what needs to be tested, who all are going to test, test environment details, the uh, duration, the uh, the timelines, etc. So those all things need to go into the test plan. So test planning work products is most, mostly about the test plans that you produce in the testing life cycle. Uh, the next category is test monitoring and control work product, which is basically when you start your test execution or when you start your testing cycle, you need to monitor and control um, the activities or the cycle, the phases that are going within that particular life cycle. So what all work products are required to do the monitoring and control activity, you produce the test progress reports, how the testing is progressing, and the test summary report. So uh, basically what all happened in that particular life cycle, you need to summarize um, how the execution went or even in the planning phase, how the, uh, how the planning uh, is, is going ahead and what all work items are produced as part of that. So in test monitoring and control, it's mostly more relevant to when you start with the execution phase and in the execution phase, what all are the devi deviations as per plan, whether you are um, uh, monitoring or whether you are progressing as per the plan or you are having some of the deviations. So if you are, if there are deviations, then you, to, you need to have the control activities for which um, your test progress reports and summary reports are really 
helpful because when you once you see your test progress report you can analyze what all items need to be completed in a particular time box cycle and how much have you progressed till now and what what is the amount of work that is uh, left as of now so you can easily correlate what all needs to be done by end of this particular time box or particular cycle so test progress reports and test summary reports are very important uh, work products for monitoring and control activities now the next set of um, work product is the test analysis work product so once um, you start with uh, the requirement analysis in traditional development methodologies when you, you need you, you use to get the requirement documents um, now nowadays you get requirements mostly in agile development methodologies as sort of uh, use cases so in in test analysis what you do is you um, basically analyze those requirement and then you define and prioritize the test conditions all right and in case you are doing the exploratory testing you prepare the test charters in case you are doing the exploratory testing so analyze analyzing whatever is needed to be tested what all requirements are there whether they are the use cases or user stories or the requirement document that you use to get um that you are you are getting uh, after that analysis what all define and uh, prioritize test condition you are coming up with that's the test analysis work product uh, the next set is uh, the test design work product so if you see um, in the test designing phase so usually once you are done with the test analysis you come um, you start with the design activities in the test design what all you produce is mostly the test cases uh, what all test data is required to execute those test cases what are the uh, preconditions re uh, required what all test environment uh, is is required so basically the design for the test environment how um, connected test environment or how integrated test environment you are, you need and then you also identify the tools which are required to execute the test cases and then any of the infrastructure requirements so these are some of the test design work product that might be uh, required or that are being produced in the test design phase of the testing life cycle uh, the next set of uh, work product is test implementation work product so once you are done with the test design you come um, to the implementation phase and in the impl implementation phase you basically produce uh, the test procedures and the sequencing of those test proce procedures so basically once you do the design you just don't uh, randomly pick any of the test case and start executing it right so you have to produce the test case and then you have to come up with the logical sequencing of those test procedures and test cases so that your execution cycle makes sense and it's basically smooth and you can cover major chunk of work without doing a lot of rework so that scheduling or sequencing of the test procedures is very important so that you you do not have to redo same sort of test data prep in each of the test case execution so basically uh, to give you an example if you are doing a test execution uh, and there are 10 related test cases that might require just one set of test data um, then what you do is you sequence or you make a list of those 10 test cases and have the test data prep same for all those test cases so once you do the test data prep you can execute all those 10 test cases so you do this sort of sequencing in the test implementation work product or that's basically the work product for the test implementation cycle then what other uh, work product in test implementation is basically test suite so you create that logical um, sequencing and then you also uh, create the test suites uh, which categorize what all test cases will go in particular test suite and then you also produce the test execution schedule um, what that means is so after you have done the sequencing you have 
uh, basically identified which test cases might be executed together with just one set of data and then what all test cases can be categorized as one in the in particular test suite um, and then uh, a test suite might be categorized in any uh, format like a particular component might be all the test cases in particular component can be categorized in one test suite or all the test cases in particular requirement might, might be categorized in one test suite so it's basically a flexible approach you can um, define uh, the way you it, it's more convenient and comfortable in your project and then you might have another test suite for the regression um, cycle uh, after that you come up with the execution schedule uh, which is basically when which test cases or which test suites are going to be executed. So these, this uh, is a brief about the test implementation work product. Uh, the next set of work product is the test execution work product. So once you are done with the implementation, now the actual execution cycle begins. During that execution cycle, you need to produce um, some of the work product along with, uh, so even during the cycle as well as once you end the test cycle or test execution cycle you need to produce some of the work item or work products so what are those work products so for example logging the status of individual test cases uh, while execution when you are executing the particular test case whether that test case is ready for run uh, or it's passed failed blocked what whatever is the status for that particular test case you log that status um, the other thing during execution is you log the defect. So you have the defect tool uh, wherein you log the defect if you, if that particular test case failed. Uh, then the other documentation or the work product is documentation about which test item or test object or test tools, uh, etc. were involved in the testing. So once you are executing the test cases, you need to, uh, uh, you need to basically mention what all things were utilized when you were documenting that but or you were executing that particular test case also when you're logging the defect you need to ensure that in your defect you mention what all tools were used what all test were were used um hardware uh, sorry software version uh, and the hardware that was utilized so all these things are also the work product in the test execution cycle now, please remember that all these work products are documented. So there are tools available. So you have test management tool to manage all this life cycle and the work products and also the defect management tool. So there could be just one test um, testing tool, which will have the test management capability as well defect management capability or in many organizations there they have separate test management tool and defect management tool. So all these work products you can categorize and store in the uh, test management and test um, uh, defect management tools uh, going um, to the next slide so after test execution uh, there is a test completion work product so once you are done with the whole life cycle you are done with your test execution you have all the work products um, produced in each of the phases in the final cycle or the test completion um, cycle uh, test completion phase you need to produce what all has been done in the whole life cycle of the testing or the testing life cycle so in test completion work product what you do once the testing has been complete you pro produce test summary reports what all testing happens so for example uh, there might be one or more test summary reports so if you are producing uh, if you are releasing your software every month uh, or quarterly you might produce a summary report every month or quarterly similar to plan uh, so you will have one or more test summary report and then there might be improvement in subsequent projects or iteration so with agile development methodology with each completion of cycle there is a retrospective meeting which basically um, in which it is discussed what all things went well what didn't went well and what can be improved in the next cycle or next iteration so same same things um uh, all all these uh, improvements are also the test completion work product and can be uh, and need to be produced by um, the end of the uh, test life cycle and after that the finalized testware is very important so what all testware was um, produced 
be it your test plan, be it your um, test cases, test suites, regression test suites, your automation scripts, where all that information is along with all the documentation that need that explains. So that all finalized testware is part of the test completion work product. So this is pretty much all about um, the work product or um, the test work products. Uh, that are important and need to be produced in the testing lifecycle. Thank you.